Massachusetts Pirates football Benson tonight. Bird. The playoffs begin. Oh, the Massachusetts Indoor Pirates Football League as Champions the second seed of Pirates football football team. take on and the third seed of the City State Raiders. Good evening again, everybody. I'm Mick Monninghoff along with Sean Louise. How glad you're with us here for playoff action here at Phoenix Field and the DCU Center tonight. Now, Sean, it has been one year since the Pirates have held the gauntlet and the trophy in the IFL. It's time to throw that gauntlet down and start again. And what better way to do it at home where the Pirates won two playoff games in their run last season? We're here again, Mick. I think every athlete's dream, no matter what you can achieve in sports, is to be a champion. And it's win or go home. All the athletes here in the building, we had a great week last week, great game last week. The atmosphere is here. The fans are here. Now it's time to put up or shut up. The Pirates know they got to show up. Every team that they play from here on out is championship caliber, and they need to bring it tonight. Well, the Pirates, when you look at the stats, are next to last against the run. And tonight they take on a running quarterback who is number two in the IFL with 51 and a half yards a game and that's E.J. Hildyard back in 2019. He was the offensive player of the year in the indoor football league. It really starts with stopping the run and stopping Hilliard. If the Pirates can do that, then yes, they'll probably be successful here tonight. All eyes on him. Hilliard is the guy to stop. I love what Juwa did. Past couple weeks he's brought in some big guys, some big up front on the defensive line. Last week they showed up. We got a couple guys, especially that nose tackle pick. Last week he was all over the field, making tackles everywhere. Our guy Rose is out there. He's ready to dominate again. I love what the Pirates defense are about to do. Big energy. I'm, I'm just excited to see. Put some pressure on this guy. Make Hilliard make some bad throws and let the back end make some interceptions. Now when you talk about the defense, the Pirates do have the number one defensive back when it comes to interceptions. In Gary Max, he has seven picks on the year. Had a pick six for a touchdown last week. That was the second of the season. Even had a pick against Quad Cities to win here back in the Pirates' second win of the season. He has been the constant in the secondary for Massachusetts. Some guys just know how to be around the football, whether he's picking the ball off, he's batting it down, he's making hits. I love his energy. Whether he's on the sidelines, Mick, or on the field, Maxie Petton, he's always ready to go. He's always turned up, just like our guy Chucky Williams. Having guys like that, they know what's at stake right now. They know it's time to shine. This is when the guys show up who really want to win this championship. Excited to see what Maxie Petton can do coming off player of the week last week. Now on the offense, Alejandro Benefield will start again tonight. He started last week after missing basically seven weeks, six games and a bye week with injuries. But his constant, his go-to, without question, is Thomas Owens. Led the league in the regular season with 899 receiving yards, and he was second in touchdown receptions with 21. It's nice to have that guy you can rely on when you need a first down, when you need a touchdown, to throw the ball to Thomas Owens. You know how I feel about Owens. He's my favorite guy. All eyes are on him, but it's great when we get, get that run game going. If the Pirates can get the run going tonight, it opens up everything on the back end. A healthy Benefield in the Pirates offense is a scary team to go against. Well, right now it's time for our national anthem. So we bring in the anthem singer who has been here most of the season for the Pirates, and that is Justin. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rampers we watched where so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bus bursting in Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free. Yeah. 
Here on out, the Pirates know they have to work. Everybody they go against, their championship caliber team, anybody can show up. They know that this Quad City team, they came to play tonight. They came to upset the Pirates. And that Pirates defense, if they did what they did last week, Quad City's going to be in for a test. So excited to see what they show up with. This defensive line needs to get after Hilliard. That's going to be what changes the game. We can also tell you that Chucky Williams, who uh, got dinged up a little bit, is in the lineup tonight, as is Jalen Marshall. Let's go down to midfield now as Jeff Knight, a referee, has a toss to the corner. Thomas Owens and Arian Maxi Penton, the two guys we talked about moments ago, will be the captains tonight for the Pirates. Malik Duncan is out there with Kimo Nayehu, the kicker. All right, gentlemen. Hilliard and congratulations and welcome to the playoffs. Even run. This is the coin. The IFL logo is ahead. The helmets are the team logos are a tail. Quad City, you're the visitor. What's your call? Tails is the call. So we'll see uh, if the Pirates can. It is a tail. Win this toss. It looks like Quad Cities has won the toss, and they will defer to the second half. You want the ball. Which way do you want to kick? So it looks like okay. the Pirates will get the football to start tonight's game. Quad City won the toss and deferred the option to the second half. Massachusetts will receive on this end. Good luck, gentlemen. So the Pirates will have the football to start, as Quad Cities will have the football in the fourth quarter. We are seconds away from the opening kick here at Phoenix Field. All right, Perry. We'll be back. Central Beacher was moment. the one to know. Who wants a T-shirt? Boston Sports Performance Center brings world-class sports medicine, sports physical therapy, and sports performance services to help all athletes and patients recover faster with a level of success that they may not have imagined possible. The center's team of orthopedic surgeons and sports medicine physicians from St. Elizabeth's Medical Center work alongside licensed sports physical therapists and experienced performance coaches to provide minimally invasive medical treatments, advanced rehabilitation, sports performance training, as well as a comprehensive concussion management program. Where you bank is a big decision. You want it to feel right. That's why Cornerstone Bank offers unlimited ATM surcharge rebates through our Right Checking program. Now you can make every ATM your ATM anywhere in the U.S. You'll also enjoy other exclusive benefits like competitive rates and generous rewards. So if paying for what's yours is starting to feel wrong, it's time to choose right. Cornerstone Bank. Built on trust. Field and the ECU Center for the opening round of the 2022 IFL playoffs. The Pirates are taking on the Quad Cities team winners. And we are seconds away from the goal. Pirates practice kickoff. Dr. Stephen Jane Hall, located at 116 Belmont Street, Worcester, is a very proud sponsor of the Massachusetts Pirates. The result will be Kimo Naehu. Veteran kicker with Quad City. He sent the kicker away. And Joe Bond of us will be the returner for the Pirates. He took one down to start the second half for touchdown last week. For the Pirates. Good look at the ramp. Averaging 18.6 per return. Oh, 
This game is underway. A bouncing kick that will go out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Already a little pushing and shoving on the far side as it looks like DJ Thomas getting involved. And here's your starting offense for the Massachusetts Pirates. Alejandro Benefield starts at quarterback. DJ Thomas is the running back. The receivers are Thomas Owens, Jalen Marshall, and Darren Carroll. Sean Locker is the center time the champion starts up front. Wilson Bell. The starters for Quad City. First and ten, Massachusetts to start this game on the 12 yard line. Owens will be in motion on the near side. Benefield with a two step drop goes across the middle and a catch is made and a flag comes out. Great catch. Darren Carrington makes the catch inside the coverage of Kendall Jefferson. Let's hold on as we sort the flag out. Jeff Knight with the first call of the evening. There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. Illegal contact, number six. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense numbers eight and 15. 15-yard penally, right, so automatic, first down. That's the way we like to start the game. It's on. I'm excited to see Marshall at wide receiver, Mick. A lot of people don't know that's his true position. He played in the NFL a couple years with the Jets. Last week, playing running back, he looked very good, very shifty. Definitely a guy who get the ball in his hands at yards after catch, so. So we'll set the football up at the 12 yard line. Noah Lyles up front with Naquez Kringle and Jalen Swan. Nate Sheets is the linebacker. It is Jefferson in the backfield along with Antoine Smith, Darion Jackson, and Malik Duncan. First and 10 at the 12-yard line, and Pirates are hit in the backfield and going nowhere is quarterback Alejandro Benefit. So a good fake. Benefield kept it, and the end stayed home and wrapped him up immediately. Good tackle. By Nate Sheets. So a loss on the play. It'll be second and 13 back at the 15 yard line. Marshall comes to the near side. Owens and Carrington in high motion. Two step drop and a quick toss complete. That is Carrington again. And Carrington at the six yard line. He's a few yards shy of a first down. Great to get him going early. Carrington's a scary guy. Usually you see him on deep routes making big plays. As we know, this is Owens territory in the red zone. Third and five. All right, you mentioned that. But the guy with the speed on the jet sweep could be Marshall. Even Thomas, having him back this week is great. He's not just a guy who can run the ball. He's a guy who can catch. He did it in the SEC. He's been doing it here with the Pirates. Empty Benefield wide hit. open. And Benefield will score the touchdown from seven yards out. Everybody went with the running backs. And Benefield Flag goes on the play. The right. They're pointing at the defense. I think it was offside. I think it's still going to be a touchdown. Offside defense, and the Pirates lead it by a score of 6-0. Nobody touched Benefield in route to the end zone. Great read by Benefield on that. Great drive coming out for the Pirates. Way to start this game. Get the momentum in their favor. Definitely what you want to see. And for Alejandro Benefield, his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. And now Gable on for the extra point. Pirates trying to get out to a 7 0 lead to start tonight's ball game. Mike Glass, the third, is the holder. Placement's a good one. Here's the kick, straight and true. With 11.55 to play in the first quarter, the Massachusetts Pirates are on the board. They lead Quad City by a score of 7 0. Back to Phoenix Field in the DCU Center in just a moment.
It's hard to imagine all the information that's flying around the world today. YouTube, Zoom videos, photographs, data, that all transmits over fiber optic cable. Over the last 20 years, Phoenix has installed thousands of miles of fiber optic cable just in the New England region alone. It goes under the oceans, on the poles, in your buildings, under the streets you drive on. That means that fiber optic cable will most likely be coming to your home in the future. And Phoenix will probably install it. Phoenix Communications, your local fiber optics expert and career choice for many reasons. Graduates, veterans, and other talented individuals of great character. You've never been more valuable than you are today. Join our unmatched team of professionals. Apply now at phoenix-fiber.com. Pirates fans, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Big Low Ultra, Bud Light, Phoenix Communications. Citron Energy, Central Pizza, and Chop Chop Convenience. Berkshire Bank, Enzo Motoring, Physical Therapy Innovation, St. Louis' Medical Center, and Cornerstone Bank. Welcome back to Phoenix Field, the DCU Center, as it is Josh Gable kicking off. It'll bounce and stay in play. And Eddie Smith has to get out of the Oh! Up. And he's not caught it. Again. It's an Uno for the Pirates. You got to give it to Gable last week. These kicks, these bounces, it, it almost makes it impossible to return. To have a cover team that's doing this, man, this sets the defense up. Two weeks in a row, the Pirates get the one point. It went right off the top of the dasher. And Eddie Smith was stood up. Looks like Chucky Williams got him first. And Arian Maxi Penton finished him off. Maxi Penton. We're going to be saying that name a lot tonight. 8 nothing Pirates with the Uno. Williams and Maxi Penton. If you're Quad City, this is not how you want to start the game. Pirates on all cylinders right now. First and 10 from the five yard line for Hilliard. He sends two in motion on the far side. Low snap. Hilliard picks it up at the goal line. And has to run forward, and he got up to the seven before he's finally brought down. Oh, they were holding love. That's coming back. And a flag. Ezekiel Rose was in on the stop along with Nashawn Hughes. Great to see him back. The center, Hunter Knobs, a guilty party. Another look. Yeah, he was holding Rose the whole time right there. And Hughes made the stop. So the holding will negate the call for the game. It turns into first and 12 back at the two. Hilliard is the quarterback. Carry on Moore's the running back. Keevan Rudd, along with Mike Carrigan and Isaiah Price, are your receivers. Nobbs, who had the hold, is the center, along with Joe Crawl and Vernon Sainville on the offensive front. Hilliard back to throw, has a man open, complete at the 10-yard line, and up to the 12 goes Mike Carrigan, his 45th reception of the season. Good play by Quad City to give him some free breathing room. Little wheel route up the boards. So there's Carrigan with a reception. Pirates defense has Ivan McLennan up front with Malik Harrison, Ezekiel Rose. Nashawn Hughes is the linebacker in the secondary. Harlan Miller, Chucky Williams, Lucas Dennis, and Arian Maxi Petten. Second down. And two. Ball at the 13-yard line. Fake to the running back. Hilliard will keep. Has the first down and about two more before he's finally caught from behind. Our man Rosen on the tackle. Ezekiel Rose in on a stop. Also, we see Davion Renfro helping out on the tackle. So Hilliard runs, sets up a first and 10 with the football at the 17. Pirates with an 8 0 lead. Let's go, Pirates! Now to bring them up. Ezekiel Rose lines up over the center. Harris on the near side. Handoff is fake. 
Hilliard fighting his way back to the line of scrimmage. He'll get there, and that's where they blow him dead. Hilliard on the key. So EJ Hilliard keeping the football two times in a row. That read option is going nowhere. Great job by the Pirates up front, closing down the gaps. Defensive backs in there filling the gaps. Great job reading the run. Vivian Renfro in on the tackle. Chance to tell you, Cornerstone Bank sponsors the Pirates with 12 locations across Central Mass. You can trust Cornerstone Bank to be there when you need them. Second and 10, 17 yard line. Hilliard with a one step drop goes to the far side, complete for the first down. And the catch made just across the 20 yard line. Looks like the running back snuck out there uncovered. Carry on more. With the catch. It's good enough for another first down. It'll be first and 10. Football at the 19 yard line. Like I told you, Moore now has 36 receptions on the season. He's a quality receiver out of the backfield. Eight minutes and the clock moving. Hilliard wants to throw, has his man caught for a touchdown. And that is Eddie Smith. So Hilliard throws and into the end zone for the touchdown. Actually, I believe that is Isaiah, it's like 16, Isaiah Grice. A little tough to see that number. I apologize for that. So Grice with a touchdown catch. Makes the score 8-6. It's 7-15 on the clock. Ayehu's extra point is on the way. This one's no good. So the point after is no good, and the Pirates... Still out front by a score of 8-6 to six with 7.08 on the clock here in our All first right, quarter at Phoenix Field on the DCU Center tonight. When they approached us to do this in the first place, we couldn't wait to get involved. Come in here and it just it feels like a football game should be here. It's a big event for us. In our opinion, this is going to be an outstanding spot to, to bring it to. And once you get a taste of it, I'm guessing you're going to want to come back. You want to come back. You want to come back. Back to Phoenix Field in the ECU Center. The Pirates are up by two, eight to six. Jovan Duran awaits the kick coming from Kimo Ayehu. You know, Durant this year, one return for a touchdown. He's been bringing it back at about 18 and a half yards per return. So Ayehu has it teed up at the goal line. Here's his kick. It's going to bounce and go into the stands at about the 15. And he's been trying to get it to bang off that wall, but it keeps going out of bounds on him. So the Pirates will take over first and 10. Looks like the 14-yard line where they're going to spot it out. Well, the Pirates scored on a four-play 38-yard drive. The first time they have the football. And we'll see what they can come up with here. Chance to tell you that Oasis Bottle Service, located in the West Hartford, sponsors the Pirates. They service from Canada and Mexico. Order at www.youroasis.world. Taste the difference and make a difference. Owens 
in high motion on the near side along with Carrington and they go underneath wide open caught. that is Thomas and Diedrich Thomas still going across the 15 to the 10 down to the 5 to the 4 yard line great move by Thomas we all know that Kim coming out of the backfield he's one of the best guys hands coming out of the backfield in this league he proved it in college proved it in the pros great to see him healthy and out there playing tonight and he played at Mississippi State breaking tackles here at the 20 and then gutting it out all the way down to the 4 yard line goes Diedrich Thomas with his 17th reception of the year to set up first and goal. Four yards away from a touchdown. 5.44 on the clock moving in the opening quarter. Pirates up by two. Thomas on the near side. Owens goes to the left. Stacked receivers are Marshall and Carrington. And hands it off. Hands off. It is down to the one yard line and Thomas is stood up there. So there's that sweep that we've been looking for. Thomas runs down to the one. Gain of about three. See, that time the defensive end stayed home because Benefield took it last time for the touchdown from about that far out, seven yards. Second and goal. When are they going to spot it at the two? Thomas Delone setback. QB sneak. And he will and keep it. Benefield into the end zone. Another rushing touchdown. That is number 13 on the season. And the Pirates tack on 6 4 and lead at 14 6 with 4 36 in the clock here in the first quarter. Well, Thomas Owens is really good controlling and carrying the football down at the goal line. Talk about ball security, he's one of the best. I think the whole stadium knew that quarterback sneak was coming there. You I can't do. stop it. I do too. Our offensive line all year, phenomenal job. Gables extra point. Snaps a good one, and the kick is on the way, and this one is good as well. Pirates have a 15-6 lead over Quad City with 3 minutes and 55 seconds to play our opening quarter tonight. Hope you're enjoying Pirates football playoff style here at Phoenix Field at the DCU Center tonight. here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. The 32-yard pass play to Dietrich Thomas set up Owens' touchdown. Three plays to go 36 yards. Now Gable will kick it away. Gable's kick all the way out of bounds. No return here for Ed Smith. The ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line. First down. So Quad Cities takes over first and 10 as they'll spot this one up at the 20-yard line. Well, chance to tell you that Physical Therapy Innovations has eight locations in and around Worcester. Physical Therapy Innovations trusted for our reputation, chosen for our care. Short touchdown runs by Alejandro Benefield from seven and two yards out. Plus the Uno, and the Pirates lead it 15-6. Hilliard, the men in motion on each side with a two-step drop. He is going deep, flags on the play. It is blown dead. 
Prior to the snap, false start. Three receivers in motion. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Penalty be first and 15 back at the 15-yard line with three receivers in motion. Can only have two. Yeah, there's the third one right at the snap at the top of the screen. So we'll see what Coach Corey Ross can draw up here. Once again, you have Mike Carrigan along with Keevan Rudd. And Bryce comes to the near side. Quarterback draw, breaking a tackle is Hilliard all the way up to midfield and comes across to the 24-yard line before he's finally thrown back. So Hilliard gets a lot back. Now E.J. Hilliard started the night, 104 carries for 566 yards and 21 rushing touchdowns. Rosen on the tackle, five yards down the field. I love this guy, man. Hey, when you have a nose tackle who can control the real estate like that, that's a positive. He's down right now catching his breath. This guy is all over the field. Second and four at the 24-yard line. So they'll attend to Rose and will step aside. Pirates lead it by a score of 15-6. to six. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 70. If only everyone had this issue, no matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Back here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. Quad City down 15-6, facing a second down and four on the Pirates' 24-yard line. Keevan Rudd comes to the near side. Kerrigan and Grice go in motion. Grice takes the handoff, and there's a flag on the play. He got back to about the line of scrimmage, and that is all. I think they're going to call a legal D. I think our defensive end jumped. Brought his hand up too soon, maybe? Here is Jeff Knight's call. Illegal defense. Number 90 was out of his stance at the snap. The five-yard penalty will result in a first down. Five-yard penalty. Illegal defense. And, yes, somebody comes up out of the stance right there on the end. So it'll be first and ten. As the football goes down to the 19-yard line. Ivan McLennan lines up on the near side. Jemias Pittman will be over the nose. Rice comes to the near side. Rudd to the far side. Reverse. Hand off oh! to Rudd, and he is stood up immediately by McLennan. What a play. He read it all the way. Ivan McLennan with another tackle for a loss. As a defensive end, to be able to make that play, the awareness in him to be in his stance and see him coming in motion, great job by McLennan. He now has three and a half on the season. What a play. So with the loss, it turns into second down and 13 back at the 23-yard line. Inside the final minute of the play in the first quarter with the Pirates up, 15-6. Rice along the near wall. Hilliard with the back to his left. Takes the snap on a two-step drop, fakes, steps up, and delivers to the far wall, and oh, Rudd drop. dropped the football. Rudd is a Quad City product out of Davenport Central. Playing for his hometown team, and unfortunately, he can't come up with a catch here. Good job by Hilliard, keeping the play alive, finding the open guy. Wide receiver there just took his eyes off the football. Third down, 
and 13 back at the 23 yard line. And they may let time run out. And it looks like Quad Cities will. So we have played the first quarter here. That is the end of the first the quarter. Center. In the first round of the playoffs, the Massachusetts Pirates with a 15-6 lead over the Quad City Steam Wheelers. We'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment. Back here at Phoenix Field in the East View Center, ready for the start of the second quarter with the Pirates up by a score of 15 to 6. Alejandro Benefield with two rushing touchdowns in the first quarter from seven and two yards out. Plus the Pirates with the Uno. Got to watch the draw here, third and long. Third and 13 on the 23 yard line. Hilliard with a one step drop, guns it, Ooh, complete. Good catch. Nice catch by Mike Carrigan at the four yard line. Almost in the prone position. They're going to put it at the five, but it's still first and goal. He was falling down and still made the catch. So that'll set up first and goal with the football at the five-yard line. In that first quarter, Hilliard was three of four, so now he's four of five in the ballgame. First and goal at the five-yard line. Bryce in motion near side. Pump fake by the quarterback. Flag on a play. Throws out of bounds. But this one may be against the Pirates. I'm not sure. You'll see the quarterback thought about running the football. Pump fake. Pulled it down. And the flag came out. Here is Jeff Illegal Lundgren. defense, number 23, was lined up in the belt, unaligned. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. So illegal defense, half the distance will be first and goal. As they're going to put it at, and we'll call it the two. It's about the two and a half. So now the Pirates got a stiffen. 14.04 and the clock moving, just underway. Moore will set up to the left of the quarterback. Carrigan and Grice will be in motion. Rudd's on the near side as well. And it is Hilliard, didn't get in. Stopped at the one-yard line, and that is Hughes who keeps him out of the end zone. So quarterback draw all the way. And Nashon Hughes making sure he didn't break the plane. Second and goal coming up at the one. Well, in that first quarter, Hilliard ran three times for 16 yards. This time, Moore sets up to his right. Rice is on the right. Two receivers right on the left. The and the quarterback will keep it, breaks the plane, 
and he's in for the touchdown. So Hilliard scores from a yard out. Quad City keeping it close with 12 minutes and 58 seconds on the clock here in our first half. And now trail 15 to 2. Good look at the touchdown from the Michelob Ultra Sky Cam. Broke the plane and he's in. 15 12 and a point pending. Kimo. Nayehu has already missed one tonight. See if they go for a two-point play to get that point back, and it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Rudd comes to the near side. Moore on the right as well, so everyone goes right. Fake toss, quick pass, complete two-point conversion to carry on Moore out of the backfield, and Quad City gets those two points back. They now trail by one, 15-14. So a good fake by Hilliard, Moore with the catch, and with 12-13 to go, it's a one-point affair here in our first half at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center tonight. back at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. And the drive that started at the end of the first quarter culminates with a Hilliard one-yard touchdown run plus the two-point conversion pass to Moore. And we have a one-point ball game. Joe Von Durant goes back ready to receive this kick from the Yehu. As Quad City is set to kick it away. Yehu very adept at those trick shot onside kicks. But this one will go on a line drive one yard deep. Durant to the 15, to the 20, and that's all. So a decent return of 21 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Pirates at the 20-yard line. Nice ankle tackle to bring him down. At the time, it was Nate Sheets bringing them down. So the Pirates have it first and 10. They're going to put it back at the 19. Tell you that Nolt Chiropractic sponsors the Pirate, Dr. Stephen J. Nolt, located at 116 Belmont Street in Worcester. 11.38 and the clock moving here in our first half tonight. Pirates up by two. Right by one, I beg your pardon. 15-14. Carrigan takes the handoff. And Carrington fumbled the football. Quad City says they have it. Hold on. There's the turnover. Nate Sheets came up with it. Darren Carrington fumbled the football. Sheets recovers. And Quad City has it first and ten. First Bud Light turnover of the night. Man, that's a big play for Quad City. So Sheets coming up with his second fumble recovery of the season. Another look at it. Darren Carrington. Wow, he punched the ball. Got punched from behind. That may have been Darion Jackson who knocked it out. So it's first and 10 at the 23-yard line. Quick toss, and that ball is incomplete. It's broken up by Harlan Miller. Defense needs to step up here. Momentum's in Quad City's favor now. We came out firing in the first quarter. That turnover could be big for Quad City. The Pirates need a big stop. Kind of interesting that Hilliard threw on first down. Doesn't do that very often. Keeping the Pirates honest. 
second down and 10, 23-yard line. Carrigan and Grice go in motion. Hilliard, fake toss, keeps it himself. Runs up to the 19-yard line before he's finally brought down by Malik Harris. Nothing fancy. Just positive yards for Hilliard. That'll set up third and six at the 19. What do you like to do here, Sean? Third and short. I think they're not going to kick in this situation. They're probably going to go for it. So a lot of their throws have been to the wall tonight. Short passes, not taking many chances. I think the Pirates, they need to put some pressure on Hilliard. I think he's probably going to try to throw something to the wall, try to get something short, get close to a first down. Well, we first charge, timeout. Time Quad City. Quad City calls timeout. We'll take one as well. They're thinking about the play call too. 9-15 to play in the first half, and the Pirates lead it 15-14 over Quad City. Back here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. 9.15 on the clock in the first half. Quad City has the football looking at a third down and six on the Pirates 19. Stacked receivers to the near side with Grice and Moore. Empty backfield set. And here is Hilliard. He's going to take off. He is close to the first down, but he didn't get it. Now the ball came loose. It looked like he was already down. Harlan Miller picked it up. I didn't hear a whistle blow, but... He might have been on the Pirates player. So you're saying he wasn't actually on the ground. The way he got pulled the rolling on the field as the runner's forward progress was stopped at the 15-yard line. Fourth down. All right, they will say he was stopped. They're trying to wait for the replay. The at Pirates are trying to wait for the replay. Well, let's take a look. Two players tackle him. Oh, it's coming loose. Well, maybe you get a challenge flag. That's up to Rashawn Kaiser. I don't know, his elbow might have been down. See, I thought he was down. So they're going to say Hilliard's tackled. And now it is fourth and two at the 15. Can the Pirates come up with a stop? It would be their biggest stop in a game. Hilliard's under center. They're going to run the ball. You think he would? Toss goes to Rudd and Rudd's down to the five-yard line. It's first and goal for Quad City. Rudd has carried now 20 times this year. He has two rushing touchdowns. He was in motion. It was just kind of a toss to him. Actually might have been not a pass, but a lateral. It was close to the line of scrimmage. I'm going to call it a Rudd run. Sets up first and goal at the five. Nickelode Ultra Sky Cam shows the wide side of the field is the left. Three wide outs on that side. And there's the toss. It goes to Moore. Moore cuts it back. Has a stiff arm and gets tackled at about the one and a half. Chucky Williams would not let Rudd in the end, or Moore in the end zone. The carry on Moore started, left, cut back, and could not get by Chucky Williams. Second and goal at the two yard line. 
Seven minutes exactly on the clock. Quad City trying to take its first lead of the ball game. They trail 15-14. Hilliard's under center. Fakes. And Great job by Pittman. Down. Pittman pulled him down. Back at the two-yard line for no gain. Good job by Pittman staying home. Yep, there's your sky cam from Nicolob Ultra. And quarterback faked the handoff in kind of reverse field, but didn't fool Pittman. This is four down territory for Quad City. I don't think they're going for a field goal, especially in a game like this. If this Pirates defense can make the stand. This is going to be huge for them. Hilliard has his play. Grice goes to the far side. Rudd's on the near side. Carrigan goes in motion. Quarterback keep. He reaches it out. He broke the plane for the touchdown. Hilliard with another rushing touchdown. And Quad City has its first lead of the night with 5.52 to play here in our first half. That's dangerous. He keeps doing that. That's the second time now he reaches that football out. If I'm the Pirates D, every time he gets close to the end zone from this time on, I'm going to smack his arm, smack that ball out. That's his second rushing touchdown tonight. He gives them 23 on the season. They're going for two again. Going for two more. Well, they were successful last time on a pass to carry on Moore. We'll see if they have that still in the arsenal. Moore is going to set up as a wide out on the far side in an empty backfield set. Carrigan and Grice will be in motion. Fake the handoff. Quarterback keep. I don't think he got in. Great job by Maxi Penton. He came in like a missile right there. So Hilliard does not get in. The two-point conversion is no good. Another look at it as we go to break. 5-10 to play here in our first half. The Pirates trail Quad City by a score of 20-15 to here at Phoenix Field and the DCU Center tonight. The Bud Light logo makes people think our seltzer is a beer, so we recruited retired NFL player Nick Mangold to block it out. And twice this year, uh, my mom was so jealous. Oh, it's a hard seltzer. Just here to do my job. And he said, I think Melanie, Melanie is the one. Oh, it's going in. <laughs> Why are you here? Great speech. <laughs> Bud Light Seltzer. No beer, just great taste. a challenge on the field for something. As we come back, there is a challenge flag on the field. Coach Corey Ross talking it over with Jeff Knight. And I'm going to guess that he's talking about, you know how like on a two-point conversion you have to have so many players within so many yards like in the belt? That maybe he's saying oh, there is no challenge on the play. All right, no challenge on the play. Forget it. Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but then why do you throw the flag in the first place? That's what I want to know. A game like this, every point matters. Seems like it's going to be one of those that come down to the wire. That turnover last drive by Quad City and turned that into points. That was great by them to try to take the momentum back. The Pirates came out all cylinders. They had the game in control. Now Quad City with the lead first time. See how the Pirates can respond. So the Pirates trail for the first time tonight, 20 to 15, and Nayehu will tee it up for the Steam Wheelers. Jovan Durant ready to return it. Here is the kick. It bounces off of McLennan and recovered by the Pirates. That was dangerous. Diedrich Thomas came up with a football, but the line drive banged off of Ivan McLennan, and it was loose at about the 19-yard line. It'll be good field position for the Pirates, but this is not how you want to get it. Thomas is a little upset. 
two guys came diving on top of him. You got to protect him there. They were trying to cause a fumble. I get it, but he was already on the ground. Yeah. First and 10, Pirates, short field at the 19-yard line. Defenseless player, you're diving in head first. You got to protect these guys. Darren Carrington leading the case for the Pirates. Well, now you see Reggie Gray something in the play to Alejandro Benefield. Benefield in that first quarter was three for three for 53 yards. Only had that one handoff to Carrington. And now he hands off here to Thomas. Thomas is going to lose a yard. Good coverage down the line by Darion Jackson. Coming up to make the hit. Right there. Darion Jackson, 5'11", 215 out of Arkansas State on the stop. So it'll be second down and 11 for the football at the 21-yard line. Noah Lyles is the defensive end on the near side. Now Quez Pringle lines up over the center. Offside oh. by Quad City. Here's the flag. Free play. Ball is caught by Thomas at the 14-yard line. Although the, I don't know if the offside came first. The Pirates. Offside. Yep, Defense number 15. I saw Five yard penalty. By the second down. Lineman. Thomas came off. It looks like he jammed his thumb. Watch. You'll see the offside, and then uh, it was right at the snap. So Thomas makes the catch. It'll set up a second down and six at the 16 yard line. Looks like we got Duran in. Probably put Marshall at running back. No, Marshall's going to come to the near side. Nope. Durant no goes back. to the far side. Owens and Carrington are out there in high motion. Benefield, quick toss to the wall, complete. Durant kind of got tangled up in the wall, almost tripped himself. Duncan was in on the stop. And the football is back at about the 14-yard line. Watch, he kind of hits the wall with his foot and it tripped him. So Durant with a catch. Third and three coming up. They put it at the 13. Pirates need to punch one in the end zone here with 2.59 on the clock moving in the first half down by five. Carrington to the far side. Durant to the near side. Owens is going to be in high motion. And now Marshall is in the backfield as the running back. Then a field drops all the way back across midfield. Ooh, screen. screen the Marshall, and he's hit wow. and going down. And once again, that is Darion Jackson. Lowering the boom. Two nice tackles so far on this possession for Darion Jackson. He read it really well. Nobody put a hat on him. He came in clean. So Marshall made the catch. Jackson had the tackle. The like Pirates the coming in. looking at a fourth down and a field goal try coming up on fourth and five at the 15-yard line. This will be a 30-yard attempt for Gable, who is number one in field goal percentage at 60% in the IFL. Thirty-yard field goal try. Here's the kick. It is on the way, and this one is wide left no good quad city's been playing unreal this second quarter so we still have 144 to go in the first half and quad city with a 2015 lead over the massachusetts Pirates.
Five-yard line for E.J. Hilliard and company. Up by five. Hilliard throws to Moore, who makes the catch and has a lane to the 15. Still going all the way up to the 19-yard line before Hughes wrapped him up. Carry on Moore with another reception and a first down. He found the lane and turned it into positive yards that carry on more. That is a one-minute warning, the and there is no yard positive yardage rule in the second quarter. And we have reached the one-minute warning here in the first half with Quad City up 20-15. to 15. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio, Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Welcome back to Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. Chance to tell you that Central Pizza at 222 Chandler Street in Worcester sponsors the Pirates Player of the Game. Pizza, wings, and more at Central Pizza in Worcester. And also stay tuned at halftime for the Phoenix Communication Halftime Highlights. Alejandro Benefield has scored two touchdowns on short runs for the Pirates tonight. Grice has a touchdown reception from 19 yards. And Hilliard with touchdown runs of one and two yards. And Quad City has a 20 to 15 lead over the Pirates. Pirates defense has not come up with a stop tonight. Quad City actually has scored on every possession, one in the first quarter and two in the second. Hilliard sends two in motion, takes a one-step drop, steps up in a pocket now, throws, oh! almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Nashon Hughes. First game back in a long time for Hughes. Drop back and pass coverage and couldn't hold on. Rose out there limping, looks like he's coming off. His knee has been bothering him. Well. Another look at it, Ezekiel Rose went after the quarterback and kind of limped when Hilliard dodged him. And he already has a brace on the right knee, and now he's stretching that right leg out. We'll step aside as they tend to Rose with 54 seconds to go and a half. Looking for financial advice and personalized service regardless of wealth? Then open an online account today at BerkshireBank.com. Our simple opening process takes just a few minutes. Once complete, you can sign up to all of our flexible banking tools from mobile banking, online banking, and our branchless MyBanker concierge banking service. Come see what it means to bank with a socially responsible bank that doesn't base the quality of service on the size of your wallet. Get started today at BerkshireBank.com. That'll put the pressure on Jemias Pittman, who will line up over the nose. Take on Hunter Knobs and company on that Quad City front. Corey Ross sends him his play. Keevan Rudd's on the near side. Rice in high motion on the far side. Hilliard. Retreats. Here comes the rush. Hughes. Hughes has him. Hughes sacks him at the 16-yard line. 48 seconds on the clock. And quads, or rather, the first Pirates charge timeout. timeout. Massachusetts. Hughes has no ball security. That ball is going to come out at some point tonight. I'm telling you. Every time he's been running the ball, he's been holding it with one hand close to the end zone. He's trying to reach it out. These guys in the Pirates D, they got to be slapping. So now a big third down play coming up. It'll be third. 
down at the 16-yard line. And the Pirates trying to come up with a big defensive stand and yeah, maybe get the ball back and score. Quad City will get the football to start the third quarter, so it's imperative to uh, get as many points as you can here before the final gun in the first half. Third down coming up here for Quad City. Pirates trying to come up with a big stand. Third down at about 14 yards to go. Quarterback draw to the 20 yard line. Still going, and now up to about the 21, and that is all for Hilliard. Second effort, got another yard, but Great that's job it. By Second you, with charge the timeout, Massachusetts. So Massachusetts will call another timeout. Try to stop him here, and still have 40 seconds on the clock. Looks like they're bringing the kicker on. Well, every play becomes big in this one. Five-point game. It's a winner go home, and Kimo Naehu will come on. They'll spot this one at the 15-yard line. It'll be a 38-yard attempt. For chemo. So after the timeout, Kimo Niehu going to attempt a 38 yard field goal with 40 seconds left in the half. Hilliard's the holder. They'll spot it at the 15. Did we ever figure out last week what was the deal with that ball that went off the upright? Yes, we did, and I'll tell you in a moment. Here is the kick. It is on the way by Niehu, and this wow, one it. is good. Kimo Niehu from 38 yards is good, and it makes the score 23-15 Quad City with 36 seconds left here in our first half tonight. Whether your team is your family, your business, or your employees, staying connected is crucial. You can depend on the Cross Insurance family Very good. to provide the best insurance solutions for you. We've got your team protected. Visit crossagency.com today. So welcome back to Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. There's Niehu, will tee it up. Jovan, nope, that is Jalen Marshall, who's back to return the kick. So we'll see if Marshall can put some life on the Pirates with 36 seconds left here in our... Going for the deuce. Half. He is looking for two, and wow. this one is good. Niehu adds on two more with a deuce. It's now Kick is good for a two-point deuce. The ball's placed at the five-yard line, first down. And the Pirates will have it at the five-yard line. Wow. How good is Kimu Niehu? He missed an extra point earlier, but hits the 38-yard field goal, and then the deuce with 36 seconds to go, and his team is now up by 10. Now, to answer your question, last week we saw a field goal attempt that hit the upright. And I spoke to Jeff Knight before the game, and I said, I thought the upright was in play. He says, no, 
It is not in play. The only thing the ball can hit on a missed field goal is the top of the wall or the oh, wall okay. itself. You know, then it would be like landing on the ground. Right. Anything else, dead ball. This is other leagues have that in play. Okay. So it is first and ten, five-yard line. Going deep. And we are going deep. The run. Oh. Incomplete. No flag. Joe Bon Durant, the intended target, and it falls incomplete. Good coverage on the play. Once again, you have Darion Jackson and Tajik Bagley defending. One thing Durant can do, he can jump. We've seen him before go up and get it. Second and 10, five yard line with 29 seconds left. You know, still time. Don't have to go for everything. But that'll stretch the defense. So now you got stuff underneath. Two in motion, far side. Two step drop. And it is underneath, but overthrown for Owens and incomplete. 24 seconds left. Now you're looking at a third and 10. I wouldn't call it pressure, but that ball was overthrown. You'd like to be in something manageable here on third down, but third and ten's a little long. So now Pringle and Lyles can all kind of load up on the defensive front. Oh, well, we got people moving and offside. Was Jalen Swan the guilty party? He was definitely in the backfield. Let's hold on. False start. Offense number 78. Half this right. to the Wilson goal. Bell's Still the third party. down. False start, five yard penalty. All right, so Wilson Bell fires out too early. Sets up a third down. And about 13 from the two. Benefield throws to the far side and threw it into the stands. Incomplete. Marshall, the intended receiver, but he was overthrown. And now it is fourth and 13 at the two-yard line. Well, 20 seconds left. And it looks like the Pirates are going to go for the first down. Imperative they get it here. Third and final charge, timeout, Massachusetts. Pirates want to talk about it with good reason. 25-15, Quad City leads the Pirates with 20 ticks left in our first half tonight. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Bando Performance. Let's go inside and check it out. Welcome to our beautiful 10,000 square foot facility where we can cater to any of your training needs. Seen him hit this before. It's not out of his range. Just tough with this in the DCU center with this Megatron in the middle. So Gable comes on to attempt a 61 yard field goal with 20 seconds left. Placement down. Here's the kick. Didn't get Way a lot up. on it. it. Is well short and wide. Let's see where they're going to spot this one out. It's right not what you out want. At about midfield. So the attempt is no good. It's not what you want. Pirates give it away with 16 seconds left. Three turn turnovers in a row by Quad City. That is correct. Carrington fumbled. A 30-yard field goal attempt that was no good.
Diehu hit a 38-yarder and then a deuce. And it's 25-15 Quad City with 16 seconds left. They could score here and get the and they do get the football to start the third quarter. And I think everything is in the playbook because Hilliard did score a couple long touchdown runs last week in the win over Iowa. So he can carry from long distance or he can throw for it too. Really kind of keeps the Pirates on their heels. Hilliard works from midfield. Two-step drop for Hilliard down the middle. It is tipped oh, and intercepted. Hughes, Hughes got picked it. it up. Hughes has it, and he's still on his feet. They're going to blow it dead at the 24-yard line. The Pirates have the football back with 10 seconds left here in the first half. Big play by the Pirates. Interception, Nashon Hughes. It was tipped, and Hughes dove for it and came up with it. For Nashon Hughes, that's his first interception of the season. And it comes here in the playoffs. A catchable ball. Moore couldn't come down with it. Went right off his chest. And Hughes picked it off. Pirates have it first and 10 at the 24-yard line there. 26 yards away from the end zone with 10 seconds left. Thomas Owens has been a little quiet tonight. Is it Thomas Owens time? I think they've been trying to get him active. Couple overthrows by Benefield last drive. This is the momentum they want. If they can score, put some points on the board right here going into halftime, they can change this game around. It would be big. Owens in motion with Carrington. Looking Carrington's way. Almost oh, intercepted. Sheets already has a fumble recovery tonight. Had it go off his hands. And then he went into the crowd. Looks like the game clock never started. They're going to have to change the game clock. Sheets read it well. Jumped wow. the route and almost had the pick. Playing linebacker like you out there. He looks good tonight. He had that forced fumble. Please reset the game clock to six seconds. The clock did kickoff. not run on that play. Not the biggest guy, but he just knows how to be where he needs to be. He wishes he could get that one back. Oh, yeah. Quad City with a 10-point lead. Six seconds on the clock. Pirates trying to punch one in here. Cut into that deficit. Yeah, you get the touchdown. It's a two-point conversion to do. So yeah, you can erase the 10-point deficit. Clear everyone out to one side. Try to get some blockers out in front and get it to somebody speedy. Benefield. Retreats back to the 15-yard line with time. Now goes to the end zone. It is tipped and tipped out. Incomplete. It hit the net. And time will expire in the first half. That is the end of the first half. Another look at it as Benefield went to the back of the end zone. The tip drill was in full effect. Darren Carrington couldn't bring it in. And the half comes to a close with Quad City leading the Pirates by a score of 25-15. to 15. We'll come back, recap the first half. Phoenix communication highlights are around the corner, so don't go away. <laughs> it's hard to imagine all the information that's flying around the world today. YouTube, Zoom videos, photographs, data, that all transmits over fiber optic cable. Over the last 20 years, Phoenix has installed thousands of miles of fiber optic cable just in the New England region alone. It goes under the oceans, on the poles, in your buildings, under the streets you drive on. That means that fiber optic cable will most likely be coming to your home in the future. And Phoenix will probably install it. When they approached us to do this in the first place, we couldn't wait to get involved. Come in here and it just, it feels like a football game should be here. It's a big event for us. In our opinion, this is gonna be an outstanding spot to, to bring it to and once you get a taste of it, I'm guessing you're gonna to wanna to come back. Wanna come back, wanna come back.
Boston Sports Performance Center brings world-class sports medicine, sports physical therapy, and sports performance services to help all athletes and patients recover faster with a level of success that they may not have imagined possible. The center's team of orthopedic surgeons and sports medicine physicians from St. Elizabeth's Medical Center work alongside licensed sports physical therapists and experienced performance coaches to provide minimally invasive medical treatments, advanced rehabilitation, sports performance training, as well as a comprehensive concussion management program. Where you bank is a big decision. You want it to feel right. That's why Cornerstone Bank offers unlimited ATM surcharge rebates through our Right Checking program. Now you can make every ATM your ATM anywhere in the U.S. You'll also enjoy other exclusive benefits like competitive rates and generous rewards. So if paying for what's yours is starting to feel wrong, it's time to choose right. Cornerstone Bank, built on trust. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue, no matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Welcome back to Phoenix Field and the DCU Center. We are at halftime with Quad City up by 10 over the Pirates, 25 to 15. Mick Moninghoff and Sean Luis out with you here as Sean, in the first half, the Pirates came out, looked like they were working on all cylinders, but then in the second quarter, the Steam Wheelers took over and they really dominated from the second quarter on. All Quad City in that second quarter, Mick. We came out, offense, defense looked great, special teams looked great. You know, that second quarter, they had three turnovers in a row. It started with that forced fumble, points off the turnover. They forced the Pirates to turn the ball over again. I think they scored on almost every single drive. The kicker, you know, with that big deuce and coming up big with the field goal. Quad City going into halftime. They got the momentum right now. Big turnover by the Pirates there at the end of the second quarter, but they weren't able to get the points. They got to come out in this third quarter like they did in that first quarter. This is true. Let's go through uh, the scoring plays. The Pirates led... 7 to nothing. Alejandro Benefield with a 7-yard touchdown run. And then it was the Uno as Ed Smith couldn't get out of the end zone as Chucky Williams and Arian Maxi Penton came up with a tackle for the one point. It was 8 nothing. Pirates. Bryce caught a 19-yard touchdown pass from Hilliard to get Quad City on the board. They trailed by 2. But then Thomas Owens with a... Is that Benefield? Benefield, Benefield scored. I'm sorry. Twice, Benefield yep. with a two-yard touchdown run. And it was 15-6 to six with 3.55 to play in 
the first quarter, but then the drive extended into the second quarter for Quad City, and it was Hilliard scoring on a one-yard touchdown run. A two-point conversion pass to Moore put him down by a point, and then it was a run play where Carrington fumbled the football, was knocked out from behind, and, he, and um, Sheets came up with a fumble recovery. It led to a Hilliard two-yard touchdown run, and it was the first time in the game that Quad City took a lead at 20-15. to 15. And then, as you mentioned, the Yehu, it's the 38 yarder follows up with a deuce and there's your halftime score of 25 to 15 so you're right quad city did kind of take over that game in the second quarter and i wouldn't say their offense has been flashy it's been methodical and effective it's like you said mick in the beginning of the game the guy to stop is hilliard the thing that's most upsetting to me i've never seen benefield look shaky like this especially in a game like this it almost looks like after that first turnover, he's trying to force things. A lot of overthrown balls. One thing that makes Benefield so special, one of the best quarterbacks in this league, he's always so accurate. If things aren't going the right way for the Pirates, even if he throws a pick or a turnover, he's always able to come back and look calm and collective. The past couple drives, it doesn't look like he's vibing with the team. Just some overthrown balls. Doesn't look like the plays are doing what he wants to do. He's got to calm himself down and get back to how he came out in that first quarter. Uh, we do have some stats. We'll give them to you here. Uh, Benefield, 5 of 10 in the first half for 54 yards and no touchdowns. Carrington was his leading receiver. Two catches for 22 yards. Owens did not have a catch in the first half, so that's something to keep an eye on. Benefield ran three times for six yards. Carrington ran one for four, and that was the fumble play. Thomas has run twice for a total of... They say no net yards, and I'm going to dispute that, but that's what it says here. Um, Hilliard tonight, rushing. Ten carries for 34 yards and two touchdowns. Hilliard is five of nine, passing with an interception and a touchdown for 76 yards. His top targets have been Mike Carrigan, two for 29, and carry on Moore, two for 28. Isaiah Grice does have the 19-yard touchdown reception. So it has been pretty much all Quad Cities since the end of the first quarter, and we'll see if the Pirates can turn that around as they get into the third. Real quickly, leading tacklers in the game, uh, Darion Jackson has four tackles and one and a half for a loss for Quad Cities. No surprise that Nashon Hughes is the leading tackler with an interception, six tackles and a sack, one tackle for a loss for the Pirates. Once again, we're at halftime, 25-15, Quad City leading the Pirates. Stay with us in a little while. We'll come back with our halftime highlights, courtesy of Phoenix Communications. That's around the corner, so don't go away. Celsa Retro Tile. Have you tried these yet? I'm sorry, ladies. It's my roommate, Emric. Emric. <laughs> Is that Irish? Bud Light Celsa Retro Tile. The loudest flavors ever.
great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio, Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com.
back here at halftime with the Massachusetts Pirates trailing the Quad City Steamwheelers by a score of 25 to 15. Nick Bonning off along with Sean Luis out. Glad you're with us. And Sean at halftime. Pirates started out well, but the second quarter belonged to Quad Cities. They came out the gate. They looked hot. Offense, defense, special teams. After that turnover, Sheets, the linebacker for Quad City, punching that ball out. They turned that into points. All downhill from there for the Pirates. It looks like they're rushing things, trying to force things. Benefield needs to slow it down on offense. Get everybody back focused. It's a long game. It's four quarters. You don't need to win the game on one drive. Defense, they need to slow this guy down like we talked about before the game. Hilliard is definitely the guy to stop. Here are your Phoenix Communications halftime highlights. Pirates started off on the right foot with Alejandro Benefield scoring on a seven-yard touchdown run. Just going off on the right side and finds his way into the end zone. Anytime we're in the red zone, there's two guys you want to watch, Benefield and Owens. Every week this season when we're at the home game, I always call it. Benefield, if we're close under the five, he's probably going to do a quarterback sneak. Great to see him be able to finish the drive there. On the very ensuing kickoff, Ed Smith could not get out of his own end zone, and it was Chucky Williams and Arian Maxey Penton coming up with the tackle, so one point for the Pirates, and they led by a score of 8 nothing. Two weeks in a row now we were able to see this play, one of the hardest plays in arena football to get. Gable's done a phenomenal job being able to keep that in the arena and get that bounce in the end zone. So the Pirates did score on their next possession, and yeah, it was Benefield, short yarded situation. He keeps it himself. He's in from two yards out. Things were looking good. It was 15-6. Kudos to the big offensive line, the Pirates. They've looked great all season. It, even if you know the play is coming, you, it's almost virtually impossible to stop. Great job by Benefield being able to finish the drive there. Now the Pirates had a 15-14 lead and got the ball for the first possession in the second quarter and it was Darren Carrington coming up with a fumble and that turned the uh, whole game around right there. Yeah, Sheets hawking the ball, punching the ball out. Carrington didn't have the ball on the outside arm. That's one thing you got to know when you're carrying the ball any league, you got to have that ball on the outside. Sheets, great job there. That changed the whole momentum of the game around. And like you said, you got to slow down Hilliard. He scores on a short touchdown run. It was the first lead of the game for Quad City as they went up by a score of 20 to 15. And right now they lead it by 10 at halftime. Nothing special by Quad City, just simple offense. Hilliard all day. He's been running the ball. He's been throwing the ball to the wall. Nothing over the top, nothing fancy. Pirates got to be able to stop this guy. Kimoni Ehu with a 38 yarder and a deuce. And that's where we stand at halftime. 25 15, Quad City leading the Pirates. Steam Wheelers get the ball to start the third quarter when we come back. So join us then. We'll be back in a moment. When they approached us to do this in the first place, we couldn't wait to get involved. Come in here, and it just it feels like a football game should be here. It's a big event for us. In our opinion, this is going to be an outstanding spot to, to bring it to, and once you get a taste of it, I'm guessing you're going to want to come back. Want to come back. Want to come back. Welcome back to Phoenix Field and at ECU Center as the Pirates will kick it away to start the third quarter. A good look at fast Eddie Smith, who is ready to return this kick. He has all kind of speed. We have yet to see him unleash it tonight. Gable has it teed up, and here we go. Third quarter underway. It's going to be taken by the up man, that is Carrigan, and Mike Carrigan comes to the 21, and that's where Quad City will put it in play to start the third quarter. Well, we get a look at the return here by Carrigan. And Sean, this is going to have to be, I think, the best defensive quarter the Pirates need to come up with this season. Starts right now. Every drive is important. We knew this game was going to come down to the wire. Quad City had all the momentum going into halftime until Hughes had that interception. Let's see if they can build off of that. 
E.J. Hilliard. We'll have Bryce carry on Moore, Carrigan, and Keevan Rudd as his specialists. Hunter Nobbs, Joe Crawl, and Vernon Sainville up front. Two-step drop for Hilliard. He is going for everything. Incomplete, and a flag came out. We might get interference here. Mike Carrigan was bidding for his 14th touchdown reception of the season. Let's get the call coming up from Jeff Knight. Pass interference, defense number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Lucas Dennis is the guilty party. It'll be a first down. How about Hilliard taking a shot on his first throw? Correction, first half play, the distance the to the goal. He had him beat by two steps. Correction, if you're Dennis it is here, 15 yards. Play. If you're 15 beating yards, this league, first down. It's no spot foul. Take the pass interference call. Don't let up the big play. Well, just got tighter for the Pirates. It'll be first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Jemias Pittman lines up over the nose. Hilliard can't get away as he is dropped for a loss. It is Hughes again. Harris hit him first. Hughes finished him off. Second sack of the night for Hughes. So now the Pirates do apply pressure to Hilliard. Sets up second and long. Second and 13 back at the 17-yard line. Pirates had one Bud Light turnover in the first half. See if they can come up with another. Ten-point lead for Quad City. Their first possession in the second half. Bryce will come in motion. Quarterback draw. Hilliard. Oh, that's holding. Pulls it inside. That's coming back. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but... You're we, calling the hold, and I think Jeff from Knight up is here. too. Holding. Offense number 66. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. They almost ripped Harris's jersey off. Hunter Nobbs, the guilty party, the center. They caught him under the chin. So 10-yard penalty will push it back across midfield to the 23-yard line. It will still be second down and 23 yards to go. So the defense... Is doing its job pushing Quad City back. And it's now second and 23. Carrigan will be in motion with Bryce. Hilliard steps up, pump fake, runs to midfield, crosses midfield to the 20 and down to the 15 yard line before Jemias Pittman tripped them up. Pittman had him in the backfield. Good hustle by Pittman staying with the play chasing him down. So a nice run by the quarterback. Using the pump fake to get the defender off his feet. That was Hughes. So it'll be third and 12 at the 16. Still a third and long situation for E.J. Hilliard. Now Hilliard told me about the first four weeks he was sitting at home, he was working in a post office. Just waiting for the phone to ring. And Sometimes that's how it works. And it did. Always got to be ready, especially if you want to go back and play football. You never know when that phone's going to ring. Third and 12, and Hilliard to the goal line, caught. And they're going to mark him out at the one. That is Keevan Rudd. It'll be first and goal at the one-yard line as Rudd makes the catch. Rudd ran the corner, and it was Harlan Miller who hit him into the wall. It'll be first and goal at the one-yard line. Now, Hilliard has already scored two rushing touchdowns tonight from short yardage. He has 23 rushing touchdowns this year. And I'd expect to see him carry the football here. Hilliard's going to line up under center. Keeps it himself, stood up, and did not get in. Hughes stood him up. Hughes had a hit on him. Chucky Williams was there as well. Arian Maxi Penton in on the tackle. It was Hughes who got him first. Hughes played a nice game tonight. 
Second and goal. Still at the one yard line. Corey Ross sends him the play. See how they line up here on the Michelob Ultra Sky Cam. Two, three wides actually. On the left. Quarterback keep. Oh, the, the ball, ball came, came out. out. I knew that recovered. was going to happen. It's recovered at the I've one yard line that. by Dimion Renfro. I've been calling that. He's been loose with that ball all night, holding it out there with one hand. Matter of time before these guys start going for that ball. Devion Repro comes up with a fumble recovery. Now you would expect Quad City to challenge and see if he broke the plane, but I don't think he got there. You can't hold that ball out like that all game and not expect people to smack it out. Looks like one of the Pirates is down. And the rolling on the is field Harris. is a fumble recovered by the defense at the two-yard line. First down, Massachusetts. And the Pirates come up with another Bud Light turnover. <laughs> Here's another look at it. Yup, he ain't in. Hit at the goal line, and the ball comes flying out, and Dibion Revro is on the turf for the fumble Quad recovery. City is challenging the ruling on the field that the runner fumbled the ball before the ball broke the plane of the goal line. The play is under further review. And there is the challenge, which I thought we would see. So they'll sort that out. We'll step aside. 10-23, and the Pirates may have this possession when we come back. Boston Sports Performance Center brings world-class sports medicine, sports physical therapy, and sports performance services to help all athletes and patients recover faster with a level of success that they may not have imagined possible. The center's team of orthopedic surgeons and sports medicine physicians from St. Elizabeth's Medical Center work alongside licensed sports physical therapists and experienced performance coaches to provide minimally invasive medical treatments, advanced rehabilitation, sports performance training, as well as a comprehensive concussion management program. Where you bank is a big decision. You want it to feel right. That's why Cornerstone Bank offers unlimited ATM surcharge rebates through our Right Checking program. Now you can make every ATM your ATM anywhere in the U.S. You'll also enjoy other exclusive benefits like competitive rates and generous rewards. So if paying for what's yours is starting to feel wrong, it's time to choose right. Cornerstone Bank. Built on trust. After Jeff further Knight. review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. The ball was loose before the ball broke the plane. First down, Massachusetts. Quad City is charged with a timeout. It will be Pirates' ball. First and ten at the two-yard line. Second Bud Light turnover of the night. And it was Nashon Hughes who forced the fumble, and Debion Renfro recovered. First and ten Pirates as they dodge a bullet with 10.23 on the clock. Here in the third quarter. In a game like this, that's exactly the type of play you need. Benefield needs to come out here and put points on the board. Benefield will start about three yards deep in his own end zone. Carrington and Owens go in motion, and it's going to be the quarterback on a keep, running for the first down. Up to the 16-yard line is Alejandro Benefield. First and 10 Pirates, and what a great call and run by Benefield to get out of the end zone area and give yourself a little breathing room at the 16. Well, we said the defense had to stand up here in the third quarter. They have so far. Now the offense has to reciprocate. Pirates are down by 10 with 9.30 on the clock in the third. 
First round playoff action here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center in the IFL tonight. And it will be Benefield on the keep. Can't spin away. Got about a yard as he is tackled by Darion Jackson. I think it was Sheets. He's been playing great all night. Well, let's see. Sheets. It is Sheets. You are correct. Nate Sheets. He started the night with 89 tackles. Well, he's well over 90 now. And Sheets had two tackles in the first half. That's at least three more tonight. It is second down and nine at the 17. Benefield wants to throw down the middle. There is Carrington, makes the catch, covers up. I think we get a late hit, too. Has it at the 19-yard line, or 21-yard line, rather, and maybe a late hit, too. They're going to add rough in the passer on the end of this play. Personal foul, rough in the passer, defense number five. Ooh, Half distance from the end there. of the I run, automatic first avoid. down. Benefield did a good job selling it. Well, get another look. I'm watching the end of this play. I don't like the way Carrington has the football oh, man. exposed. Yeah, I'm being picky, but why not? After you fumble the ball, you got to hold that thing like you've never let it go again. So, with the penalty added on, it'll be first and 10 at the 11-yard line. A beautiful spot because you can always get a first down at the 1. Pirates trail, 25-15, first possession, third quarter. Dedrick Thomas goes wide to the far side. Marshall's wide on the near side. Looking Marshall's way, and they overthrow, incomplete. Thomas Owens was the intended receiver. Sean Lockett's going to get a late hit foul, foul over here on Sheets. Oh, that's costly. These are the kind of penalties you want to avoid. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 66, 15-yard penalty. The down counts, second down. 15-yard penalty to back him up. When you're down by 10, I know it's tough to restrain yourself, but you have to. Football goes back to the 24. So now it's like second and forever at the 24-yard line. Pirates got to get a first down at the 1. Benefield, pump fake, now delivers on time, complete, Carrington makes the catch at the 10-yard line, and we'll see where they mark his forward progress. It's going to be right at the 10-yard line, and the Pirates are 10 yards away from a touchdown. Nice catch by Carrington, who held on and had four tacklers right around him. Third down, and nine at the 10-yard line. Clocks at 6.50 and moving. Nickelode Ultra Sky Cam shows the wide side is the left, and you have three wide outs on that side. And Benefield's looking that way to the goal line, caught for the touchdown. Thomas Owens. And a little John going on after the catch for Owens. Has his first touchdown reception in the playoffs and his 22nd overall this season. And the Pirates are down 25-21. What'd you like about that one, Sean? I love it. He's the guy you want to look for in the red zone. Big play. That's what the Pirates need. Turn over there, drive the whole field, punch it in. Owens gets involved now. There's definitely a guy you want to get involved in a game like this. Extra point coming up from Josh Gable. Mike Glass puts it down. Here's the kick. It is on the way. It is good. And with five minutes and 46 seconds to play in the third quarter, the Massachusetts Pirates 
trail this game 25-22 for the Quad City Steam Wheelers. It's hard to imagine all the information that's flying around the world today. YouTube, Zoom videos, photographs, data, that all transmits over fiber optic cable. Over the last 20 years, Phoenix has installed thousands of miles of fiber optic cable just in the New England region alone. It goes under the oceans, on the poles, in your buildings, under the streets you drive on. That means that fiber optic cable will most likely be coming to your home in the future. And Phoenix will probably install it. Back here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. Five minutes and 46 seconds to play in the third quarter, and the Pirates are coming back. They used a fumble recovery at the goal line by Gibeon Renfro and turned it into points with Thomas Owens. What a 10-yard touchdown reception from Benefield. Six plays to go 48 yards, and the Pirates trail 25-22. Now Gable has it teed up. And here is his kick. It will go about five yards deep. Eddie Smith at the five to the 10 to the 12. And that's going to be all. First and 10, we'll call it 12 yard line for Quad City. Why go away from the bounce when it's been working so good? Good question. They've had more success with the football on the ground than returns of the normal variety. So now E.J. Hilliard will try to respond. Corey Ross talks with Hilliard, Carrigan, Moore, Rudd, and Grice. They have their play. It'll be at the 13-yard line, first and 10. Harris, McLennan, and... Pittman up front. Actually, Rose is back in. Here's a deep ball. There's going to be interference. And there's the flag. It was intended for Carrigan and I believe Miller's the guilty party on that one. And now Maxi Penton getting his finger pointing action going on there. So on the last two possessions, Hilliard going deep on first down at both times. There is no foul on the play for pass interference. Second down. They picked up the flag? I think they called it on the offense. I don't know. Maxie Penton had his, all, his eyes on the ball. He was playing the ball, too. If the defender has his eyes on the ball, he's just as much a guy who can go get the ball as the wide receiver. Wide receiver went into him, so I think it was a good call by the refs. Let these guys play. Okay. There was contact, no doubt. Second and 10. 13-yard line. Carry on Moore, and Rose is going to have the tackle. Good to see Rose back. At the 14-yard line. So a third and long coming up. The way Rose limped off, I wasn't sure if we'd see him the rest of the night. Oh, man, Maxi Penton is fired up now. He's not the guy you want to be talking to. You get him fired up in this game. You get a guy like Chucky Williams fired up in this game. This defense is ready to play now. Well, let's see. Third and long. Scoreboard says second. It's actually third. It's right on the field. They're trying to get me, but I'm paying attention. Eight yards to go. Football's at the 15-yard line. Hilliard, pump fake, rolls, throws down the middle, complete. Rudd made the catch, broke a tackle, crosses the 15, down to the 11. It'll be first and 10. 
So Rudd with a nice catch and run. Sideline warning, Massachusetts. Down. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. So five-yard penalty tacked on. So it's going to be first and goal coming up after the catch and run by Keevan Rudd. Very quietly, Rudd. Looks like coach is challenging it for the Pirates. And here comes Massachusetts the is challenging that there were three men in motion on the play. The play is under further review. So we'll go under the hood and see if the ball will go back to about the 11 yard line. We'll step aside during the review. 2.56 to go here in the third. Quad City leads it 25 22. night and we'll get the result of this challenge after review there were three receivers in motion resulting wow. in a false start great offense challenge by the pirates that is a dead ball foul the sideline warning against massachusetts is also a dead ball foul they will offset will replay third down and eight from the 15 yard wow. line that's a big challenge by Offsetting the pirates setting penalties three receivers in motion yeah great call well, some, you know, it comes down to coaching sometimes, or Sean Kaiser knows. Massachusetts is not charged no with a timeout for the challenge. Penalties. It's third and eight back at the 15-yard line. Chance to tell you, you can check out Boulevard Diner, 155 Shrewsbury Street in Worcester. Open 8 to 11 p.m. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're open 24 hours. 2.50 on the clock moving, third quarter, third and eight, 15-yard line for Quad City. Hilliard with time to the near wall, incomplete, intended for carry on Moore, and he overthrew him. Fourth and eight at the 15 coming up. So now do you roll the dice if you are The coach just called the Corey kicker Ross. off. Kimo Nehu has hit from 38 yards. Let's see if they move it back. They'll have to. What a job by the Pirates in this third quarter. Holding them scoreless so far. Great job by the defense. This will be a 50-yard attempt. See if Niehu has it in his leg. Here's the placement. The kick is on the way. It is going way wide off. to the left. And the Pirates hold as the field goal is no good. Massachusetts will take over at the five-yard line where it'll be first and ten. 140 on the clock. The Pirates are down by three. 25-22 to Quad City. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 
все в ней. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Field sends Owens in motion on the near side. Benefield going to keep it himself and runs and upended at about the seven yard line. So Owens is tackled by Antoine Smith. It'll be second down coming up. To tell you that Bando Performance is the official strength and conditioning partner of the Pirates. Bando currently offering 30% discounts. To new members at their Worcester and Woburn locations. 35 seconds left here in the third quarter. It'll be second down and eight at the 12. Owens in motion on the near side. Benefield looking his way. He makes the catch at the 15. Breaks the tackle to the 20. And I'll mark him out of bounds at the 20-yard line on the catch by Owens. Great job by Owens. It'll be a first down, and they'll put it at the 21. Five seconds left, and the time will tick away here in quarter number three. That is the end of the third quarter. quarter. Coming up in the first round of the IFL playoffs, and the Pirates trail Quad City here at home by a score of 25 to 22. Welcome back to Phoenix Field and the DCU Center as we are set for quarter number four. The Massachusetts Pirates trailing Quad City by a score of 25-22. All third quarter for the Pirates. They held them scoreless. Great job by the defense. Turnovers. Benefield looks totally different than he did in that second quarter. More relaxed. Getting Owens more involved. Definitely what you want to see. And you're right. He doesn't have to force things. You, know, you got a whole quarter yet. It's a three-point game. Something's not there. Throw it away if you have to. First play to fourth quarter for the Pirates. And Benefield looking deep and overthrew. His intended receiver and Diedrich Thomas incomplete. Thomas laid out but couldn't come up with a great effort. Didn't miss him by much. All right, Reggie Gray. What are you sending in? Took the shot there. I think you slow it down. We've been hitting him over the middle. Curl routes, little slant routes, crossing routes. Haven't seen much out of Jalen Marshall yet tonight. See if he gets involved here. And Benefield going to keep it himself. He runs for the first down. And there's the whistle. Just about 11 yards. Good enough for the first down. Well, let's take a look at our stats as we have them as we get another look at the run by Benefield. Great lead block by Thomas there. Low in his shoulder. Allowing Benefield to get the first down. Good job by Benefield. Low in his shoulder there. Getting the first down. Keeping this drive alive. Through three quarters, Benefield had carried six times for 23 yards, so he has another 11 there. He has two touchdowns. He was 9 of 15 passing through three for 106 and a touchdown. And Darren Carrington, four catches for 50 yards, the leading receiver. Here are the Pirates looking at a first and 10 with the football at the 18-yard line. Two in motion on the left. 
flag on the play. Underneath route, Owens caught. About an eight-yard gain, but let's hold on. I think it's offside by Quad City there. Looks like Jackson tried to jump across the line of scrimmage and hit the wide receiver before the play was even started. I think with the eight-yard gain, well, we'll see. Time's down to 13-17. Here comes the official call. Offside, defense number six, five-yard penalty, replay first down. We're going to take the five yards and replay to them. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, and then he touches them. I might as well touch you up here. So it'll be first and ten. First and five. Or first and five, rather, at the 13-yard line. First and five at the 13. Marshall along the near wall. Carrington, slot same side. Quarterback keep, nothing. Looks like we're misaligned. Coach was trying to call a timeout, I think. Noah Wiles was there on the stop. Uh-oh, Benefield's down. And he is really slow to get up. Another look at it. Miles makes the hit. Kind of got him maybe with a helmet in the rib area. Benefield is up and jogs off under his own power. And now the Pirates will enter Mike Glass as the quarterback unless they call timeout here. Oh, they start the clock and Mike Glass is in. Mike Glass on the season. 29 of 52. Two interceptions, eight touchdowns, 345 yards. He completes 56% of his passes. Won two games on the final drive for the Pirates during the season. Let's see if he can do it again. Here's a quick toss, complete. And that is Thomas at about the 15-yard line. Well, just something easy to start with on a little toss to Thomas. It'll be third and seven. Loss of two on the play back at the 15-yard line. Well, does Mike Glass have one more comeback in him? 11.30 in the clock moving. Carrington on the near side. Owens in motion. Fake to the running back. Toss to the end zone. Oh, they're holding Flags him. come out. They're holding him. Owens is held. Pass interference will be called. And the Pirates will have a first down. Pass interference. Defense number six. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Automatic first down, spot of the foul. Darion Jackson, the guilty party. Oh, yeah. Eh, he hit him from behind. The Jackson call for the foul. It'll be first and goal Pirates with a football at the seven-yard line. Pirates with a touchdown here can take the lead. Down by three with 11 minutes to play in the ball game. Mike Glass on in relief now. The injured Alejandro Benefield. Thomas lines up correctly now. Handoff goes to Owens. He will run to the five and shoved out of bounds. Gain of two for Thomas Owens. Well, that'll keep people honest. Good job by Sheets, Quad City. He's played a nice game tonight. Sheets is a local product and once played at Augustana College. It's on the Iowa side. 10 16 of the clock moving. Second and goal at the five yard line for the Pirates. 
Three wides on the left. Looking that way is Glass with time. Still looking. Has time. Still looking. Flag came out. Now throws. Caught. Touchdown. And it was caught by the back, Dedrick Thomas. Holding. There is a flag. Offense number Holding 70. 10-yard penalty. Replay the second down. will be negated. Well, he gunned it right to the wall. And Thomas made the catch in traffic. But the holding will bring it back. We'll come back to the 15-yard line. It's going to be second down and goal from the 15. Thomas in motion on the far side. Owens on the left. Handoff goes to Thomas. Nothing there. Sidesteps a couple tacklers and got down to the 11. Somehow, Thomas got away from Malik Duncan. Watch him duck under. He was wrapped up. Avoided sheets. Broke another tackle. Good job by Thomas getting positive yards at least out of that play. Third and goal. They're going to put it at the 11-yard line. Chance to tell you, Quarterstone Bank sponsors the Pirates. 12 locations across central Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Uh, I'm thinking about going home, right? Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> you can trust Quarterstone Bank to be there when you need them. 8.47 on the clock moving. Oh, they're holding again. Yeah, got away with it. No flag yet. Now here's the pass to the back of the end zone. Overthrew the intended receiver. Incomplete. That was... Jalen Marshall, who went high and couldn't bring it in. Well, there was no holding on the play, and that ball a little too up for Jalen Marshall. So field goal coming up to tie the game. They're going to put it down at the 18-yard line, where it'll be a 26-yard attempt to top. With eight minutes on the clock. Gable's already missed one tonight. Here's the snap. Gable's kick on the way is good, and we have a tie ball game. Seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining here in the contest, and we are tied 25-25 as Josh Gable hits from 26 yards. Welcome back to Phoenix Field and the DCU Center. We are tied at 25 with 7 minutes and 49 seconds to play. Now I'm going to say it. In regulation. Here is Josh Gable's kick. And this is Ed Smith about 6 yards deep. Straight forward to the 5, maybe the 6, and that is all. Arian, Maxi Petten, and Joe Von Durant were there on the tackle. So Quad City will put it in play, first and 10 at the seven-yard line. Good coverage downfield by the Pirates. 
Hey, did I tell you that Cornerstone Bank sponsors the Pirates of 12 locations across central Massachusetts? You can trust Cornerstone Bank to be there when you need them. And J&J Pizza Express serves delicious pizza, subs, salad, seafood, and more. Three Rice Square in Worcester. Since they came out at halftime, Mick, Quad City hasn't even come close to the end zone. Pirates have done a great job all night keeping them out. This half, Pirates need to keep this up. First and ten at the seven-yard line. That is not quite true. We had the fumble. Yes, at that goal line. And now here's the handoff. It is Moore, straightforward. Crosses the ten up oh. to about the 13-yard line. And that is Harris, who is in on the stop. Also, Harlan Miller helps out. So more carries. It'll be second down. And four as they spotted at the 18. Looks like Benefield just came out of the locker room. I don't know if he's going to make a shot at coming back on the field. Well, we'll see. 6.35 and the clock is moving. Hilliard. Receivers on each side. Underneath route. That is Rudd who makes the catch at the 20. And they're going to mark him at the 24. Keevan Rudd with the catch. Not a bad choice. Throw the ball short. Go to the guy who's open. Move the chains a little bit. Goes first down. First and 10. Football at the 24-yard line. Five forty-six, and the clock moving. Tie ball game at twenty-five. Three wides on the far side. Pump fake, looking down the middle, wide open, caught. Touchdown, Kevin Rudd. He was wide open. Eleventh touchdown reception for Rudd on the season. Touchdown pass number twenty-nine for Hilliard, his second of the ball game, and yeah, that was a blown coverage. Twenty-six yards on the play. Quad City now at a 31-25 lead with 5.02 in the point pending. Nayehu on for the PAT. Placement down. Nayehu's kick is good. Four minutes and 42 seconds to play in this one. And the Quad City Steam Wheelers now out front. 32-25 over the Massachusetts Pirates. Welcome back to Phoenix Field in the DCU Center in just a moment. It's hard to imagine all the information that's flying around the world today. YouTube, Zoom videos, photographs, data, that all transmits over fiber optic cable. Over the last 20 years, Phoenix has installed thousands of miles of fiber optic cable just in the New England region alone. It goes under the oceans, on the poles, in your buildings, under the streets you drive on. That means that fiber optic cable will most likely be coming to your home in the future. And Phoenix will probably install it. Back here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center, Joe Bond, Duran, and the Pirates got a little work to do as they trail Quad City 32-25 here in this opening round playoff game at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. As Kimu Neehu will tee it up and kick it away. SGT Sports Massage at 145 Front Street in Worcester sponsors the Pirates. SGT Sports Massage, they're not just a spa, they're an experience. Quad City showing no ill effect of a long flight in last night as they lead it 32-25. See if Neahu bounces this one. 32-25 lead as Quad City kicks it away. It'll bounce and roll. Picked up at the three. 
Durant wants to go to the far side, cuts it back up the middle, crosses the 10 up to about the 14-yard line. That's where the Pirates will put it in play, first and 10. Picked it up on the roll. Nice move. Carry on Moore was in on the tackle. Well, through three quarters, Hilliard was 6 of 12, but now he has two touchdown passes in this game. Now the Pirates have to answer. Benefield's ten. back. Yeah, Benefield back in. See what he does on first down. He is throwing deep. He is looking for Owens. Overthrew him incomplete. They were holding him again. Well. Flag came out. Pass interference, defense number six, 15-yard penalty, automatic, Another first down. Interference call against Jackson. First down, yep. Put the hands on him. Owen still got close to that football. It'll be first and 10, football at the 21-yard line. Short field now for the Pirates. 4-15, plenty of time. Pirates are down by seven. Three wides on the far side, and it goes to the near side. Caught by Thomas as he sits down on the dasher. And that's not a bad throw. I don't think I've ever seen that. Guy catch the ball and sit on the dasher like that? I've seen guys get thrown into it. Seen plenty of guys go over. Thomas got great hands. Hey, use them. Second and four at the 15. Benefield keeps it himself. Looks like his ribs might hurt. Just as he got close to the wall, he kind of grabbed for his ribs and he's coming out. I thought that's maybe what hurt him when he was originally tackled and he had to leave. And right before he gets tackled and goes into the wall and gives himself up, you saw him grab kind of like his left side. So on a run by Benefield, it'll be third down and four, and they're going to mark on the football at the 15. So no game, and Glass is back in. Pirates down by seven with 2.47 left in the game. Carrington in motion. They go the far side. It is Marshall who makes the catch. He may have the first down. They're going to give it to him by about a yard. Jalen Marshall goes up, holds on, has the first down catch. Went one-on-one -on -one with the D-back and one. First and ten. First and goal at the 10-yard line. See if Mike Glass can get the comeback accomplished as the clock's down to 207 moving. Three wides on the near side. Handoff. Goes to Thomas. To the oh, five. yeah. Three touchdown. Cedric Thomas rushing touchdown. Number seven on the season. And the Pirates are a point away from tying the ball game with 150 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Diedrich Thomas picked up blocking on the left side. Owens with the seal block that really opened the lane for him. And here's all the all-important extra point to tie the game. High snap, placement down, kick on the way. This is good. And with one minute and 20 seconds to play, we have a tie ball game, 32 all with the Massachusetts Pirates and the Quad City Steamwheelers.
The Bud Light logo makes people think our seltzer is a beer, so we recruited retired NFL player Nick Mangle to block it out. Twice this year? Uh, my mom was so jealous. Oh, oh, it's a hard seltzer. She's here to do my job. And he said, I think Melanie, Melanie is, is the one. one. Oh, it's going in. <laughs> Why are you here? Great speech. <laughs> Bud Light Seltzer. No beer, just great taste. Welcome back to Phoenix Field and the VCU Center. One minute and 20 seconds remain. The Pirates and Quad City Steamwheelers tied at 32. Eddie Smith back at his own goal line. Josh Gable tees it up. The longest minute in football, the end of an arena football game. This is true. Here's your kick. Onside, onside kick. kick. Oh, it is botched. Gable. Oh, and Gable has it. Gable with an onside <laughs> kick, and he recovers. Wow. It went off the hands of Grice, and he wow. couldn't hold on. You really didn't see it coming. Gable almost didn't follow the kick. Now watch. Grice has it roll and it kind of goes off his knee and it rolls free and Gable dives on the football. Wow. First and 10, Pirates with 1.17 on the clock. They're going to spot the football at the seven yard line. Talk about a gutsy play. That is a one minute warning. Because the score is tied, the positive yardage rule is not in effect. It's only in effect when the offense is ahead in the score. All right, so the positive yardage rule is not in effect because we have a tie game. Jeff Knight, keeping everybody honest. Wow. One minute to play in regulation in a 32-32 game. What a gutsy call. What a great job by the Pirates executing that onside kick. The funny thing is, nobody hit Grice. I mean, it was his to pick up. It wasn't like he was in traffic or anything. And he went for it before the 10 yards. So as soon as it bounced off him, live ball. Good job by Gable. Amazing, just amazing. First and 10 at the seven yard line for Mike Glass in for the injured Alejandro Benefield. Look into the near wall, pump fake. Now rolls right, goes down, holding. and it is Carrington who makes the catch. It's coming back. Like it never happened. Holding offense number 70. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. Going to replay first down. It'd be like first and 13 from about the three. 54 seconds left. Chance to tell you that Apex Entertainment in Marlboro is a place you can enjoy bowling, go kart track racing, mini golf, bumper cars, sports simulators, and more. Apex Entertainment where perfect weather is always guaranteed. But there's nothing guaranteed in the final 48 seconds of an indoor football league game. First and 13 at the three-yard line. Glass, going to run it himself. Gets to the six before he's finally brought down. That was Darion Jackson in on the tackle. First charge timeout, Massachusetts. The Pirates will take a timeout with 31 seconds left. 
after the run by Mike Glass, who covers up at the six-yard line. Well, Sean Luis Al, if you go back to the last playoff game the Pirates played, it was a 31-yard field goal that won it all for Massachusetts off the foot of Garrett Hartley. All the Pirates got to do is get, I think, close to that 25-yard line. Gable, he's a guy who can hit from anywhere, but you want to at least get in somewhat field goal range. No mistakes, no turnovers. Tough they got that holding call. That would have put him in a good situation right there. Gable has a make from 26 yards tonight. Well, it's always exciting. The Pirates against Quad City here at Phoenix Field and at the ECU Center tonight. Tied at 32. Mike Glass on in relief of Alejandro Benefield looking at a second down and 10 at the seven yard line. Retreats to the end zone, throws to the near wall. Marshall complete and Going to try to advance. Now tackled at the five. Are they going to give him forward progress or call him at the five? They're going to call him at the five-yard line. So a loss of two on a completed pass to Marshall. Second charge timeout, Massachusetts. It's hard to say that, you know, you could just go down where you make the catch. He was trying to extend the play. There's 15 seconds left. <laughs> so we stay right here. A chance to tell you that you can represent the champs everywhere you go. If you shop online for Pirates gear at www.shopatmasspiratesfootball.com. Of course, you can always follow the Pirates on Facebook at facebook.com slash mapirates Instagram at mass.pirates Twitter at mass underscore pirates and TikTok at mass pirates well the pirates are 15 seconds and 3 points away from going on to the next round but you can say the same thing about Quad City we are tied at 32 Gable with a 26-yard field goal. Diedrich Thomas, a 10-yard run in the fourth quarter for the Pirates. Rudd with a 24-yard reception for Quad City. We're tied at 32. Glass to throw. Complete. Out of bounds. First Thomas down. Owens. <laughs> On third and five, completed pass to Owens for a first down. There is 10 seconds left. All right, Sean Louis Sal, you're calling the plays. Do you take one shot before you call on uh, maybe a hitch and then a field goal? I think you do the same type of play. Try to get as close to the 20 or the 15 and let Gable try to end it. Okay. I thought with 10, maybe you take one crack. Let's see. First and 10. Ball to 18-yard line. Glass wants to throw, and he's taking the shot. He's looking for Carrington overthrown, incomplete. Now you got to kick it. Four seconds left. So with four seconds left, Josh Gable <laughs> is coming on for the game-winning field goal. You know, he had... A couple of game-winning field goals on the road last week. Probably the most memorable one came against the Frisco Fighters in the final seconds to win it. Matter of fact, he had back-to-back -back weeks where he hit game-winning field goals at the gun. This one's going to be spotted. Well, let's see. At about the... 11-yard line. 
Third and final charge timeout, Massachusetts. Massachusetts calls timeout as Gable's looking at about a 47-yarder to win the game. Now, it's funny. I remember writing a story about Gable with those game-winning kicks, and they tried to ice him. And he said to me, I like it when they try to ice me. It gives me more time to think about exactly how I'm going to execute. It's crazy. I used to be a teammate of his, and the harder the kicks, it seems like he likes that more. It's Sometimes the easiest kicks for him are the harder ones to make. I've seen him make some insane kicks. He's a trick shot kicker. He's had some shots in the NFL. He's definitely capable of making this kick. What a way to end this game if he can hit this kick right here. They're going to spot it at the 11. About a 47-yard field goal attempt to win it with four seconds on the clock for Josh Gable. As the Pirates are looking to go to the second round of the IFL playoffs. Mike Glass is the holder. Snap is good. Placement down. Here's Gable's kick. It is blocked. And the ball rolls free, and it is recovered by Glass at about the five-yard line. It was blocked, I believe, by Jackson. That is the end of the fourth quarter. Darion Jackson blocks the kick. And we are going overtime. 32-32 on the clock. Reset. We go overtime here at Phoenix Field in the DCU Center tonight. It's been a great one so far. We expect more, so don't go away. When they approached us to do this in the first place, we couldn't wait to get involved. Come in here, and it just it feels like a football game should be here. It's a big event for us. In our opinion, this is going to be an outstanding spot to, to bring it to, and once you get a taste of it, I'm guessing you're going to want to come back. Want to come back. Want to come back. will have the choice you can start on offense or defense or you could choose the side of the field we will have a first down and 10 from the 20 yard line and each team will get one timeout for each possession series so you'll each get one series and if we're still tied we'll go to a second one you'll get new timeouts once you have two possession series for that third one. We're only going to go for two from the three-yard line. We're clear? You are still the visitor Quad City. What's your call? Heads. Heads is the call. It is a head. Defense. You want to be on defense, defense first. So you're going to be on offense. Which side do you want to go? Which side do you want to be on offense? Down that way. First down, Massachusetts. So you heard the rules from Jeff Knight as we welcome you back into Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. The Pirates will have the football to start the overtime. And they'll start first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Alternating possessions. And if it goes to a third overtime round, you have to go for a two-point conversion. So the Pirates have the football first. Thirty-two, thirty-two game. We start the overtime. Pirates possession, first and ten at the twenty. Mike Glass is the quarterback. Jalen Marshall, wide to the far side, along with Darren Carrington. Thomas Owens comes in motion, fake the sweep. It is Glass who's going to run, 
to the 15, maybe the 14 yard line. Oh, Lockett's down. Popped up. Lockett gets up limping. Nice run by Mike Glass on first down for about six yards. Second down. And four coming up from the 14. Thirty-two, thirty-two, and we expect it to be a tight ball game. Is exactly what we got tonight. On second down, Glass runs forward, finds a seam, first gets down. to about the nine, and it's first and goal coming up for the Pirates. So Glass has run twice in succession. And comes up with a first down for Massachusetts. First and goal at the nine-yard line. Pirates, the defending champs in the indoor football league. Trying to take a lead here on Quad City. Last Pirates lead was in the first half. Here's Glass again. Runs to the five. And upended and out of bounds. Well, they're giving Glass the option to run, and he's taking it. Someone's hurt. Oh, I think it was Big Lockett again. He popped right up. So Mike Glass has run three straight times. They spot the football at the four. Second and goal, the four-yard line. Glass is the only quarterback that the Pirates have is Benefield is out what I what I believe is a rib injury. Three wides on the far side. Glass looking that way. Pump fake. Gonna keep it himself. Runs forward down to about the two. So Glass has run four straight times. Third and goal at the two-yard line. Pulls it back, pump fake, and runs straight forward. Now this is Alejandro Benefield territory. For Mike Glass, he's got two rushing touchdowns on the season. We are in overtime, first possession for the Pirates in a 32-32 game. Marshall Sweep to the right. To Thomas? Maybe. Thomas is on the left. Thomas goes that way, takes the handoff, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Good call, Sean Luis out. Thomas. If it keeps working, why go away from it, Nick? Thomas on the sweep. For six. Pirates have their first lead since the first half. Good look from the Nickelode Ultra Sky Cam. Lockett's been toughing this whole drive out. I know he's hurting. He's been limping up after every play. Love to see a guy like that finish the drive, doing whatever he can to get the Pirates closer to this championship. 38-32 Pirates. Here is Gable on for the all-important extra point. Placement down, kick on the way, and this one is no good. No good. And the Pirates lead it 38-32 as now Quad City gets its possession in Not overtime. Good. Extra point, no good. Wow. Crucial. Now the Pirates defense has to do its job. Pirates with a 38-32 lead. First and 10, 20-yard line for E.J. Hilliard. And Hilliard back to throw, goes underneath, 
to Moore up to the 15-yard line. Carry on Moore with the completion. Another look at it. Something just simple. Nothing too much. Just positive yards. Five-yard gain. Second and five at the 15. We are in overtime. Hilliard has two touchdown passes tonight. One to Grice, one to Rudd. Mike Carrigan on the far side. Quarterback oh. option, and there is Chucky the big Williams. tackle. Chucky Williams knocks down Hilliard. Read it all the way. Great job by Chucky right there, shooting the gap. As we know, it's four down territory, Mick. They have to stop him here. If they stop me, they got to stop them on fourth down. Pirates defense needs to win this game. Pirates lead it, 38-32. And now it is third and five at the 15. Corey Ross sends in the play. Rudd goes wide to the far side. Carrington's going to be in high motion. Rice in high motion on the left. More of the lone setback. Two-step drop for Hilliard. Oh, Here Rose. comes the rush. Gets away. And now he gets away from a third tackler. It's still going. Now flips wow. it forward. Moore makes the catch. And Moore fumbles at the goal line. Now are they going to say he was out of bounds? They're going to say he was out of bounds. Moore is out of bounds at about the two. Pirates had him in the backfield almost three times. Watch. One. One. And then... The oncoming rusher is the second and third. Hilliard so elusive. And then the flip pass to Moore, who hits the wall. Yes, a good call. Out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Wow. I think they got away with a little holding call there, too. It was a fumble after he hit the wall. First and goal with the football at the two-yard line. Hilliard's under center. You think he's going to keep it here? Hilliard wants to throw the jump pass, and Grice never saw it. I don't know if Chucky Williams stood him up in legal territory or if he just never really got turned around. No, he never really got turned around. Matter of fact, it looks like he turned the wrong way. Incomplete pass, second and goal at the two. You know, I never expected Hilliard to throw a little pass like that, which is one of the reasons why it would have been effective. Second and goal at the two-yard line. Pirates with a 38-32 lead. Here comes the read option. And it is a handoff. Oh. And it looks like he is stood up at the goal line. And a third down coming up. So another look from the Mixed Ultra Sky Cam, and it is Carry On Moore, who has stood up at the one yard line. Third and goal at the one. That's all they're gonna do now. Read option, try to get the quarterback in the end zone. I don't even think you try to hand off. Quarterback lean gets you in from a yard. Found the Pirates and I know the quarterback's keeping it up, slapping it. He's going to try to put his arms over the goal line here. Uh, 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 hold on. Whistles, whistles. Timeout. First and final time. charge timeout. Massachusetts. So the Pirates call timeout on third and goal at the one-yard line for Quad City as they're looking to tie up the game at 38 and then could win it with the extra point. Very entertaining game tonight. At halftime, it was 25-15, Quad City. Is that Toby Johnson? I think it is. I'd love to have him out there right now. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Hilliard fumbled going in for a touchdown. Hughes forced it. Renfro recovered. The Pirates got a 10-yard touchdown pass to Thomas Owens. The third quarter ended 25-22, Quad City. 
Gable tied it with a 26-yard field goal at 25. Rudd had a 24-yard touchdown reception to make it 32-25. And then it was Thomas on a touchdown run from 10 yards out with 150 on the clock that tied the game and sent it overtime. Pirates got a Thomas touchdown run, missed an extra point. Now Quad City trying to tie it up and over, broke the plane, touchdown for E.J. Hilliard. Another rushing touchdown is 24th of the season. Third rushing touchdown of the night, and now with an extra point, Quad City can win the game. Hilliard touchdown, third of the night, ties it, 38-38. Kimo Naehu on for the extra point to win the game for Quad City in overtime. It all comes down to this kick. First and final charge timeout, Quad City. Timeout by Quad City. Well, a playoff win on the road would really be a feather in the cap of Corey Ross as his team came into this game 9-7. and seven. But as you think about it, they had a win over Vegas who defeated the Pirates. They went 2-1 and one against... Or yeah, won two of three against Iowa and won two of three against Green Bay. Both of those teams had win of, wins over the Pirates. So you knew it was going to be a tough game all the way. Tough if the Pirates lose this one because they missed an extra point. It's definitely not the way you want to lose, especially fighting all the way back, getting this game into overtime. Yep, it's true. Pirates have had chances, but here is Kimo Naehu on for the extra point to win it in the first overtime round for Quad City. Hilliard's the holder. Placement down, kicked by Naehu is on the way. It's good, and the Quad City Steam Wheelers have defeated the Massachusetts Pirates by a score of 39-38. to in the opening round of the IFL playoffs here at Phoenix Field at the DCU Center and the reign of IFL champions for the Massachusetts Pirates has come to an end. Quad City, a 39-38 win over the Massachusetts Pirates. We'll come back with the Stewart Health postgame recap in just a moment. It's hard to imagine all the information that's flying around the world today. YouTube, Zoom videos, photographs, data, that all transmits over fiber optic cable. Over the last 20 years, Phoenix has installed thousands of miles of fiber optic cable just in the New England region alone. It goes under the oceans, on the poles, in your buildings, under the streets you drive on. That means that fiber optic cable will most likely be coming to your home in the future. And Phoenix will probably install it. When they approached us to do this in the first place, we couldn't wait to get involved. Come in here, and it just it feels like a football game should be here. It's a big event for us. In our opinion, this is going to be an outstanding spot to, to bring it to, and once you get a taste of it, I'm guessing you're going to want to come back. Want to come back. Want to come back.
Boston Sports Performance Center brings world-class sports medicine, sports physical therapy, and sports performance services to help all athletes and patients recover faster with a level of success that they may not have imagined possible. The center's team of orthopedic surgeons and sports medicine physicians from St. Elizabeth's Medical Center work alongside licensed sports physical therapists and experienced performance coaches to provide minimally invasive medical treatments, advanced rehabilitation, sports performance training, as well as a comprehensive concussion management program. Where you bank is a big decision. You want it to feel right. That's why Cornerstone Bank offers unlimited ATM surcharge rebates through our right checking program. Now you can make every ATM your ATM anywhere in the U.S. You'll also enjoy other exclusive benefits like competitive rates and generous rewards. So if paying for what's yours is starting to feel wrong, it's time to choose right. Cornerstone Bank, built on trust. Looking for financial advice and personalized service regardless of wealth? Then open an online account today at BerkshireBank.com. Our simple opening process takes just a few minutes. Once complete, you can sign up to all of our flexible banking tools from mobile banking, online banking, and our branchless MyBanker concierge banking service. Come see what it means to bank with a socially responsible bank that doesn't base the quality of service on the size of your wallet. Get started today at BerkshireBank.com. Whether your team is your family, your business, or your employees, staying connected is crucial. You can depend on the Cross Insurance family to provide the best insurance solutions for you. We've got your team protected. Visit crossagency.com today. Hey everyone, welcome to Bando Performance. Let's go inside and check it out. Welcome to our beautiful 10,000 square foot facility where we can cater to any of your training needs. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com.
Welcome back to Phoenix Field in the DCU Center. Once again, your final in overtime tonight, the Quad City Steam Wheelers, 39, and the Massachusetts Pirates, 38. Well, Sean Luis Allen, it was the game that we expected. We knew this was going to be a close one, and it went to overtime, and it turns out to be a one-point win that knocks the Pirates out of the playoffs. Tough way to lose, Mick. If you're going to go out, you don't want to lose because of an extra point. Pirates fought so great that second half they came out. They held them scoreless in that third quarter, fighting all the way back, even Benefield going out and forcing it to overtime. Definitely not the way you want to lose. Well, this game was a Quad City lead after three quarters, 25-22, but the Pirates did tie it up, and we'll start with our end zone motoring drive of the game as the Pirates were able to get the football all the way down in the red zone, which led to a 25-yard field goal by Josh Gable, and it tied the game with 7.49 on the clock. Yeah, he hit some good kicks in the game, but the one that mattered at the end, that's the one we really needed. Wish we could have had that at the end of the game. Now, Hilliard, who was more of a runner in this game, did go up top 24 yards to Keevan Rudd, and the touchdown pass put Quad City back out front by a score of 32-25, and that came with 4.42 to play. Yeah, it was tough all game. We were saying it, Mick, that's the guy we have to stop is Hilliard. Looked like some broken coverage there. Chucky bit up. Guy got behind him. Great job by Hilliard finding the open guy. Time was running out for the Pirates in the fourth quarter, which leads us to our cross insurance play of the game. And it was a 10-yard run by Diedrich Thomas as he gets into the end zone, ties the game at 32, and the Pirates had new life. On the ground and even catching the ball tonight, Thomas looked great. He's a guy, once he gets going, it makes the offense that much easier. Unfortunate tonight, we didn't get the W, but he played unbelievable. You know, I think that when you score those touchdowns when you need it at crunch time, it, it really says a lot about the way you carry the football. And Diedrich Thomas is our central piece of player of the game as he scores again in the overtime to give the Pirates the lead. It was the first time they had led since the first half and Massachusetts was out front 38-32, but they missed the extra point. Even up here, I think everybody in the stadium knew that play was coming. A guy like Thomas, the way he runs the ball, able to find the gap, get vertical and find the end zone. He's a guy in the red zone, definitely one of the Pirates' you know, secret weapons. He did a phenomenal job finding the end zone late in the game for us, getting us into overtime and giving us a chance to win. But Quad City did get their chance in overtime, and of course, you call on Hilliard. Hilliard with three rushing touchdowns tonight. Punches it in from short yardage, and you know that would lead to what would wind up being the uh, winning extra point. All night, that's all he was doing was throwing the ball up and trying to put it over the end zone line. If I'm the Pirates coaches, I'm saying, hey, as soon as that ball is snapped, just start punching where you think he's going to put his arms. I mean, we were able to get one fumble out at the end of the game that close to the goal line. You've got to try to punch. You've got to try to do whatever you can to get that ball out. And the winning point in this game comes off the foot of Kimo Niehu as he... Splits the uprights with the PAT, and Quad City goes home the 39-38 winner in overtime. Well, let's take a look at the golf postgame stats report, and I think you uh, got to put it right out there. Hilliard with a big night tonight. Two touchdowns passing, three touchdowns rushing. That's big. Hughes tonight for the Pirates. Hadn't played in a long time. Got back in the active roster and wound up the leading tackler with 10. Forced a fumble. Also had an interception on the evening. And then uh, how about Benefield? He runs 32 times, 32 yards, has two touchdowns, and unfortunately got hurt, couldn't finish the ball game, and Quad City goes home the 39-38 winner. Hughes is my player of the game for a guy that hasn't played in so long to come out here and put a performance on double-digit tackles, diving interception all over the field tonight. Unfortunately for the Pirates, you know, we didn't get the win, but he played phenomenal on the defensive side. He should be proud of himself. Well, that is your Stewart Health postgame recap as, once again, your final tonight. 39-38 in overtime, Quad City knocks the Pirates out of the playoffs. Now for Sean Luis Al, the entire staff, I'm Mick Monninghoff. Thanks for joining us this time around and all season long. Once again, your final in overtime, Quad City over the Pirates, 39-38. So long, everybody.